Just make the announcement. Uh, welcome everyone to oh, the. Oh, oh, Rick, Rick, uh, Kate, can you everybody please start your recordings uh, again? And Rick, please record to the cloud. <laughs> Thank you, Vince. According to the cloud. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the forty-fifth um, health teaching workshop. We'll have a shorter workshop today, as we're a little pressed for time. We've got um, over on the Chinese. Um, so we'll go right ahead. Uh, Mr. Kesh is ready there, I believe. And um, go ahead, Mr. Kesh. Just had to find the unmute button there. Can you start over again, please, Mr. Kesh? Yes, I said yes. Good morning, good day to you, whenever and wherever you listen to these teachings. Today will be a very short 40 45 minute session for the health because we had the extended Chinese section on the, on the systems they're working on and other questions they had. Uh, there is one point which I have to announce before we go in respect to the health. And the Cash Foundation from January on will run a live clinical trials from Valletta. What it means, we are testing the limitation of the health we are not entering the health section. We are entering the effect of the CO2 on the structure. So we will announce in a further detail how we're going to run these trials. This is systems we use in conjunction with the CO2 of copper oxide to see the interaction, exactly what happened with the Chinese. But we are taking a step further on the control condition. We can control a lot of factors. Hopefully. We're running a trial on the 6th of December here for a week. And with a successful result from January, we run a full trial worldwide. We teach a lot of people like the blueprint that you can run the whole thing at the same time. So we set up, hopefully, if you are correct, the next box to the energy box, the magnet power system to show how we can use it for the health application. Okay, is there something, any questions, or you want to show us something? There was, um, I think it's Ali, uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Zadef had a- Yeah, uh, this is uh, Ali Sharif Zadef. From um, so I have a- Hi, Mr. Kesh. Yes, you got to show us something? Yes, uh, so um, I created this felt pen and it's basically, um, as you can see, there are two uh, copper wires and I nano-coated them. Uh, this is the outer piece and the smaller one is the inner piece. So I put them together and also, um, after I put them together, I um, dance coated them, and um, and once I dance coated them, um, I used a, a plastic. Um, let me bring it here. So uh, you know, inside the pens, there is a like the plastic um, part inside a pen. I cut a piece of that and I filled that with gans and I put it on top of the, uh, inserted into the top of the wire. And then I used a bubble tea straw and I wrapped and I, and I basically inserted this in, inside the bubble tea straw. And then I closed the top part and the bottom part uh, of, the, um, of the straw. Uh, my experience was that whenever I use this, um, uh, it, within 10 or 20 seconds, like if you have a pain in any part of my body, it, it just disappears. Uh, it feels so good that I actually, when I go to sleep, I sleep with this. And I just use it around my body and I basically, it, it feels really good. It gives me a lot of energy like throughout the day. And uh, it's been There's really a problem. We, we advise you strongly not to use GANs in any of the pens. Okay. We, we advise you strongly, if you use a nano-coated copper, 
and you use on the tip of the central wire CO2, there is not much problem because it brings emotional balance to the point. But you okay. cannot, you should not, under no circumstances, use GANS coating on any of the health units. Okay, because okay. I'll, you I'll create the condition that it can, it is a much stronger field balance than the cells of the body and it's not uh, so advisable. You use a okay. nanofibers, okay. then you bring a balance in at the muscle tissue. Okay. Okay, thank you. thank you. And I appreciate your comments about the uh, the two watt meters. I, I had two of them, I took one out. So I'm testing it with uh, like counting the meters uh, throughout the day. Uh, thank you for everything. You're welcome. What's the next question? Mr. Rick? Kesh, I have, Mr. Kesh, this is Kel L. I have one about asthma for children. You have what? I have a question about asthma for children. Yes. I have a friend, He's his, his daughter is uh, in the hospital a lot uh, because of asthma. And I was wondering if he was using a pain pad and he had some, some uh, results from it. And I was wondering what you would suggest as far as um, that. My idea, my suggestion, my personal is nothing advising you, is we have to understand what is asthma. You have, you cannot use an asthma or a pain pad to put on the lung. The, the shortness of breath, the lack of intake of oxygen, you have to understand what's the reason for it. If it's chemical or environmental, you have a different thing. But most of children, asthma comes from this little chap, we call it the emotional part of the brain. It's the emotional part which is responsible for the lungs and you have to find out what is triggering, what's the reason for the asthma. Asthma is emotional manifestation of emotional, it's a physical manifestation of emotional pain. When children cannot adapt or accept the emotion. The emotion, we said always, lungs is the oxygen, or what you call the oxygen, we call the energy supply to the blood vessels to feed the emotion. And then when the emotion is damaged or is in problem, it shows its work to the lung to adjust the energy take that it can handle the emotion. So, in fact, when you see a child with asthma or anybody with an asthma attack, it means the emotion has changed the absorption of the energy for long to facilitate the emotional suffering. So, the asthma, when you see a child, you have to ask a child, what is the problem? What is bothering you? What is the thing that you cannot accept that it shows itself in a change of breathing or oxygen intake? So 90%, 99% of emotional problem with children manifests itself because they cannot handle it in two ways, epileptic attack or asthma. Or what we call us. There are two ways. Can I call my pure my life? We were trying to publish this paper. It was, it's been written a long time ago. It's been given as a gift to, as I said this before, to South Manchester Hospital for children with asthma attack. And it's, I, it's just, I have to finish it myself. She goes through a process where the child gets exhausted enough that he or she can explain what's the emotional trap or what is bothering her emotionally. And in facing her own emotional problem, 
asthma disappears within half an hour. And it never comes back. But if you do not sort out the source of the uh, emotional problem, the asthma will repeat itself. We even see, don't forget, emotional part of the body is part of your skin. So you see asthma, which is uh, the, the lung, or you see like eczema on the surface of the, because brain is part of your skin structure. And the lung is part of the same follow-up. So you get eczema when it's physical damage in respect to rejection of the emotion. And if it's emotion in respect accepting condition, then it appears as an asthma. You have to get the child to a position that he or she can explain what is emotionally bothering her. Five minutes, there is no asthma. They can walk out and we try, I hope we get a chance to publish this by this Christmas. It's called My Pillow, My Life. And you can do it at home. What it is, is a process of, Caroline developed this years ago with running our children from one hospital to another and everything else. And then, uh, very simply, gathering the knowledge from different processes we've been together uh, with the children, uh, and it works. All it is, you, the pillow is that you take the child to a breathing rhythm with a physical tiredness, with what you call with the bashing of the pillow. And when they get tired, you let them cuddle the pillow that they feel comfort with it because they say their word, they say their emotional strength, uh, stress what bothers them in pillow bashing. And then when they lie back and they go through Recovery from the strength, uh, tiredness, exhaustion, you let them talk. Because that's a weak point of the interaction of physicality. And they tell you, and they themselves listen to the problem. You ask them, what's the problem? What is the cause of it? What is bothering you? And they talk their pain, they walk off. I've had it with an 18-year-old girl. I had it with a 21-year-old girl who were both been raped. And one of them even went through the removal of, uh, what do you call it, the glands, thyroid glands. And when she could speak, the condition changed. Now she's a doctor, she's a psychologist, a doctor in the United States. And I've seen her with an 18-year-old girl, she couldn't say to no one that she was raped. And it took half an hour to change her life. We got a letter from her. Because it's very simple. You have to find the emotion which changes. As your emotion changes, the energy absorption from the lung changes too. And that change of energy absorption, in a way, changes the breathing rhythm. And we call it the asthma attack. Once you saw the emotion, as we always thought, blood, is for the emotion. Then you find out the energy absorption goes back to normal, the child walks up. We've seen children which in the summer, they have to be kept outside and in winter inside because they get blisters this big on their skin. Two sessions, no blisters. You could throw him in, uh, in the swimming pool, freezing cold, no problem, whatever, nothing at all. Because there was a competition, between the brother and the sister. And he could not accept that the older sister takes everything and there is nothing for him. So by emotional feeling, he could show blisters that the mother will care for him, or he's sick, and he would get his attraction and attention, emotional satisfaction. 90%, we have asthmas, which are industrially caused or environmentally caused. Those are different things. With those, maybe, you can use the CO2 pads. You do not use, under no circumstances, copper oxide gas. Because lung is, belongs to the emotional part, not to the physical part. For the emotion, you always use the gas of CO2. For physical part, which is below the heart and down, you can use 
copper oxide. Even that, you have to be careful how you use it. It's not just because you know you have it. And then you have to find out, even with the cancers, if it's connected to the emotional cancer, if it's connected to emotional, you mix two or three different cancers to compensate for the energy level. So, your friend with a child in the hospital with asthma, walk to the child and say, what is the problem? What is bothering you? Is your brother taking too much sweet you don't get? Or mother is giving too much cuddle to papa, you don't get it. A lot of children, especially single children or a second child, get an asthma attack or asthma condition because they see as they have not got the piece of the cake. If mama is very close with papa, I'm not getting it. So I want that emotional comfort of cuddle. So I don't get it emotionally. I change my mood, energy absorption. I must spend more energy in my emotion to think and compensate for it, for the loss of what I'm not getting, then the lung has to change to compensate for the energy use of the emotion. And then you call it the asthma attack. Understand the source, don't look at the physicality. Now you know the way the body operates, go back to the health teachings from the beginning, then you understand it's very simple. We'll try to release this paper. It's called My Pillow, My Life. And uh, it's been sitting on my computer for too long to, to be redone, to be released. It'll be one of the papers published by Caroline, the third job. I've just added a little bit to it. And it's, uh, Caroline has done a lot of research in the health. She is extremely well taught in the health section and energy transfer within the body. She's a gorgeous scientist in her own way. Uh, so you got to understand how the physical manifestation has really emotion. You saw that one within seconds, within five minutes, they just woke up till the next asthma attack. Then you find out what's this time. Because people who get used to finding, they go from one excuse of emotional hurt to another one, because this way they get attention. And then a lot of children, very young children, which go through the asthma attack at a very young age into hospital, and they get the attention and everything else, this unsets what is called attention deficiency because they get a very attention, everybody nurses, how are you, do you want this, do you want that, mama stays home, now I'm important. Then it creates the first steps of attention deficiency, long-term problem in the family. You have to be fully aware of this. Or you find the parents, especially the mothers, who once the child goes to such a critical, you have to be there when the child goes through asthma attack. For a father or mother is a death condition. You prefer to be dead and you see your child there. And then it's the weakest point, but some mothers see this weak point as a way of controlling the father, using the illness of the child. And then that leads to another thing, a disease called mother magic, which means the mother keeps the child continuously sick for her to have a justification to exist, even though there's nothing wrong with the child. Go on the internet, read about it. These are the two side effects, especially asthma attack. At a very young age, if it's not controlled, long-term leads to attention deficiency because they see a way of getting attention, or the mother see by father getting all the attention, by the child being sick, she gets attention, she starts a process called mother munging, which is a horrible condition the mother keeping a child continuously sick for different reasons, for her to have a reason to exist because of the child. So you find the child is never sick, forever is on the way to the hospital. Mother, I'm here, I'm the savior. There is a reason for me to exist. Usually happens with the second child because the first child is gone, the second child now is growing. Uh, then if this is not there, there is no reason for me because the other one gone, the second one grows. It's got a psychological background. It's a drastic condition. And 
more or less, it's irreversible because it lasts throughout the life of the child. So go back to your friend, see if it was environmental. If it's not environmental, ask a simple question from the child. What is the problem? I'm here to listen. Maybe I can help. And then you give the first threat. Is it sweetie you're not getting enough? Or the other brother goes to the holidays somewhere you didn't go. And they just start speaking. And in speaking, you find a problem. They find their own problem. And they walk out of the hospital with them. Next question. There was a question on the live stream. How can I help hypothyroidism and low liver kidney function? I'm not a doctor. Go and ask your doctor. Okay. You ask exactly what both of them are, what is the function of both, and then you'll find out where your problem sits. It's a psychological psychosomatic. Most of these conditions are psychosomatic. Um, there's another question. Uh, is the Keshe Foundation's new cancer tumor research uh, that invited the volunteer patients for research a year ago still ongoing? My friend has advanced cancer with a big hole on her chest. Uh, anything we can do to we, help her? We are looking into it. We're still testing. We are evaluating new systems for a space technology. We are not, I do not build any more systems. So we are looking into a space level technology for diagnosis and the reversal through the plasma condition. And yes, even two or three days ago, we were working on it here in this building. And again, we run a test in December and then in, October, in January, we go to the next phase. You have to realize that we are getting requests by a lot of um, medical hospitals for collaboration to understand the implementation. And we, we are running tests around the world by different people in different ways. We see some results. We see some reports of results from China. We have some reports from um, different countries. But yes, the research is still going on, but we are very selective, very few for us to understand more before we go to the next step. You got to realize something. It's not like two or three years ago where we put things out and just follow. As you've seen even with the magna power systems, 200 units are leaving today. 200 magna units is going for delivery today. 200 units going for delivery tomorrow. And uh, uh, so the same position is that we have to be precise in whatever we put out to be correct now that we stand in this position internationally. We can't just put something out and just look after one or two cancer patients. It has to be applicable for thousands of people around the world. So um, she asked, can I have an email address to make an appointment? So are, are you actually taking, uh, is there an email address? Not at the moment, not till December, okay. not till end of December, at least mid-December. We finish on 11th of December. We'll make the announcements in due course when we open, in what way, what, uh, what diseases, and what we're going to do. But the cancer research is going on very, very strongly. In the background, we have cases. Very few, but we are monitoring. Okay. We're not accepting all the cases because we have to be 100% correct when we go out. Right. Um, there is we Let me explain to you, it's not us anymore. Cash Foundation, as I explained in the teachings, is all of us. So when we put something out, all of us have to be good for all of us that we do not do anything wrong to each other. So when we start teaching about the cancer, like the power unit, we teach all of you. Then you all can test. And the results come back in and we look at it. Next question. 
Okay, there's a, Ivan asks, there's an 80-year-old woman who has a genetic disorder called uh, homeochromatosis. Um, it's hereditary. It's basically, it's an iron overload in her body. Um, ask for, is there any help for that? How old is it? 80-year-old woman. Eight, 80? 80, yes. Oh, no. I have no answer. Iron overload. If if you were younger, I would have told you what to do. Not that age. Okay. Um, Martin asks, what is the reason for having Alzheimer's? Is it possible to cure it with Magrav fields? The Alzheimer's is 80 to 90% reversible. Then you have to find out why the person wants to forget. Alzheimer's it's reversible. Most of you can do it um, in a very effective way. When it comes to the health teachings fully with the, uh, what do you call it, the Magra power units we teach you. We've done it so many times. It's just that you have, again, it's a psychosomatic. You have to find out what's the reason that they want to forget the condition. And then you have to support the emotional side. Then you find out everything is remembered. I've said this before. If a person can remember any song, even they can hymn it from the wedding, I'll call it 20, 30, 50 years ago, Alzheimer's 80% reversible without, without any doubt. So if they can remember music, it means the memory part of the brain working. All you need to do is just to open the gates. What is the fear of holding? And then they remember everything. The only thing is, ask a person with Alzheimer's, can you sing me a song? And the best one is, do you remember your wedding song? And if the husband or the wife is there, he or she goes through it, and they follow, and they follow. Then you know 80% is reversible, at least 80%. We have had cases, people who could not do, even they didn't know what it was, pancake. And then they used to make pancake as one of the favorite things for the children. Now she makes pancakes, she pays the bills, she goes back and serves everything else. It's just, if you want to know the case, if it's reversible and you have somebody with Alzheimer's, try to ask them. Ask them, do you remember the Beatles song? The closer to the date the song remember, to you, to the point in time you're sitting, the more possible of reversibility. The further song is towards the wedding, like 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, the closer you get the remember song 70s, 80s, or 60s, or 50s, it shows you, give you an indication of what percentage of the memory you can get back. Just ask them, sing your song. And the best one I find out is, can you sing me a wedding song? Or do you remember uncle's wedding? Do you remember the song? I need somebody to hymn it. And if they hymn, they don't need to do the words because music is different than memory. Words has pain. Music is usually connected with pleasure. You want, you accept it. That's why you ask for the music. That's hymning. You don't ask them to sing a song. And then if they can do, you can return the memory 80%. And the text doesn't take long, three months maximum. Next question. Okay. Um, uh, Is Mark, it nearly five o'clock? Giovanni? Close. Five o'clock? Nineteen to. Okay, we got ten minutes. Okay. Um, Mars asks about what about regeneration of bones and cartilage? Uh, bone and cartilage can be. We have done it. It needs a, a specific way of handling it. Uh, it needs a specific uh, system to be built for it. And usually, it's a very, very slow process, especially the cartilage. Very, very slow process. Because you walk on it, you sit, you do all sorts of things, and you damage it, and it has to repair itself again and again. 
If you can isolate it for three months, most probably you can get away with it. The same is with the bone. The bone construction, the people who have a problem with the bone, bone loss or bone mass loss, we teach you part of the training, the, the what they call it, the blueprint time for the systems. How you can, using the plasma, using the gas in a specific way, even position where on the bone you want to create connection. You can use the, if it's a broken bone, you can use the magnetic pads. The magnetic pads which we sell on the Cash Foundation website can help quite a lot with uh, fracture bones and a broken bone. The speeds up the healing quite drastically. And I tell you that from experience because I've used it myself, as I said before. I fell off a horse with 10 broken bones. 14 days later, I gave five hour lecture. No sign of anything. So you can use it. You can use the health pads in a specific way that you can aid the, in certain cases or most of cases, the growth of the bone. Mr. Kesh, this is Kel L again. Yes. Uh, I had another question about memory. Uh, the problem memory. that I, 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 I'm starting to observe, especially with the uh, people that are in the listening crowd or that are trying to learn, is that uh, the televisions have taken their memories and fractured them. So could you just give me some kind of a uh, suggestion as far as like a some things that they could use uh, uh, to- What can you repeat? I don't understand. Well, I'm finding that a lot of people are having problems with their memories, but not just uh, old people. I mean, young people also. People are having a hard time uh, uh, being uh, attentive and having attention deficit di disorder, I think. So I was wondering uh, if you had anything to say about that. Not really. I, I cannot say anything or explain anything about it. Depends what's the reason, and what is engaging the mind. You have to understand that the body of the man and the brain of the man has a limited capacity. If you overuse it, it has to compensate from memory to another side. So when you use it too much or you engage it too much, use somewhere else, it has to compensate. It's one of the easiest way to do is to, you got to understand the concept. We're showing the brain with Marco the other day, with the, in a container. If you have deficiencies, there are certain ways you can do it through the GANS uh, with uh, different materials like a zinc and potassium and calcium. But in time we teach it because it has to be done correctly. Any other question? Thank you. There's a question or some confusion about uh, uh, Masset asks in the live stream about a template for healing with or without GANs and which one for where? Pardon? Um, where, where can, I think he means, or he or she means, uh, 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 when does GANs get used for healing and when does GANs not get used for healing? What uh, circumstances or conditions? Uh, you cannot generalize it. Mm -hmm. Depends what it is. You always remember in the back of your mind one principle. You're dealing with an emotional problem or you're dealing with a physical problem. Or has the emotional has set the physical manifestation of the problem. And then you handle it in that process. Then you decide which cancer you use in what combination and in what process. Uh, it's not as, uh, what do you call it, black and white. It is the problem as we explained with the lung, 
is it due to uh, emotion or is it due to the industrial uh, or environmental problem? And then if it is, can you support one lung for a short while with one way? while the other lung uh, effectively repairs itself. You cannot use, by under no circumstances, any copper oxide in the upper section of the body of the man. Impossibilities. Where in the lower parts, from diaphragm below the heart, is one of the main things, but then you have to understand is it copper? Is it a different thing? What's causing the cancer, for example? Every gas has to be calculated. As I said, when it comes to the cancer, the first thing you look for is the heavy metals in the body or semiconductors in the body. It's a process. And then you balance it with the gas. Any other question? You create a gans of iron in the opposite way. You can physically see extraction of minerals from the body of the man on your system. If you are good enough, if you are very, very wise in how to do it, the same as you saw the CO2 in the container, you use the body of the man, you set up a specific, especially with these power units, that replicates the, the iron in the body. And all it does is transfer of its energy. Don't forget, iron in your body is in the cancer, it's a plasmatic condition. You transfer its energy. This is what your paratheral glands do. They transfer one element to another. That's all they do. They don't go and look for phosphor. They use phosphor, calcium to create phosphor by changing its fields or extracting or adding. So you do the same thing matching outside. You can literally go with a finger and scrape the, the iron off the finger if you know what to do. I've done that. Especially with the cups, when there is a condition, when I open the cups, I can see what I've extracted. It's very simple. There's a similar question in the um, questions here where Wad asks, is there a MagGraph technique to soften hard water, i.e. to remove or rebalance the calcium, lime, and other minerals found in well water? So that would be a yes. similar thing. Yes, yes, you can do. One of the easiest way, if you, you uh, what do you call it, you want to soften calcium, from the water is uh, a lot of people don't tell you about is if you don't use a plasma condition it's use magnets if you get a container and um, what you need to do is uh, if you have a lot of calcium in your water this is permanently and you just wash it what you do, you need to get yourself circular magnets and the ones which are O-ring. Never use rectangular magnets. And you place them in a north-south positioning, in a container in a all direction, 360 degrees. And all you do, you allow the water to come in with a very slow rate to go out. You find all the calcium literally lines up here, like a nano coating. And every few days, you just wash the calcium off. The, what do you call it, these, and where are the magnets? Have we lost them? Where are our magnets? Ah, there he is. He runs out with it. Use, uh, just use a simple magnet. Nodium magnets are very good for this job. You just create a container, very narrow, not very big that you can extract. And every few days, just wash, 
When you touch it, you feel it. It's like sandpaper. It's like literally sand, grains of sand. The stock. You just wash it. It gives you a very clean, soft, sweet water. In so many ways. Where did you put them? On the whiteboard. On the whiteboard. Ah, okay. So what you do, you have to use in different combination because you create a field flow here that extracts most of the calcium. Because this, uh, what do you call them? Num, 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 no medium. I can never tell it. Near way, even top up. These are uh, one of the best because the gravitational magnetic field. If you use these against the other, the same as CO two creates a magnetic field of strength here, which is of calcium, and it literally attracts it. Literally attracts it. I uh, when I get cups back from the volunteers. I look, I know what kind of water they've been drinking. Because in the magnet side, I see how much the absorption is. And it's clean, it's the easiest way. You don't need to spend a fortune to soften your water to take calcium out. You can do the same thing if you find the right, it's a combination of these black magnets, I call them, and these. If you get the right combination, you can take all the fluoride out of your water the same way. Because a lot of people have a fluoride. I know, especially in Canada, there is a big debate about fluoride in the water. They add to it. You don't want it. Fill the container. It has to be a very slow rate water that it gives a chance that gravitational magnetic field in respect to what is created here and here. It then just stick to the wall. You just wash it every couple of days. You feel it. If you put your hand inside the cup, you feel the roughness. You see the calcium. Um, Mr. Kirsch, I think, you want, I think you wanted to leave a few minutes early here to get to your next meeting. <laughs> yes, we have a couple of important uh, Zoom calls that we have to make. It's been prearranged, so we have to go. Thank you very much for today. Oh. Yes, he's there. He's awake. Is that Dawson? Huh? This is Dawson. Yep. He is a child of the foundation. We hear him all the time. It's a nice voice to hear. Um, so, hey. uh, <laughs> yes, Dawson. He doesn't speak for Mr. Keshe. Do you want to say hi to the world, Dawson? Hi, world! Hi! He's there. No, there is no kid workshop today. Okay, thank you very much for today. We are back on the public teaching on Thursday. We have a few announcements to announce and repeat a couple of things which repeated in Chinese teaching today in respect to the power units and the, what do you call it, CO2 kits, and a couple of other things regarding some of the foundations around the world and their work. And... Uh, Hopefully, we hear from the people who receive their first units, how they see it, what they have, and the rest of it. And I was told by the factory that the second week of December, the, the Cash Foundation pen supplies will be available, the pen pain, and the pain pads from the Foundation Italy will be available around about the second week of first week of December. So, and the CO2 kits from the Keshe Foundation, Italy from the factory will be released. It's getting very red. It's going to be very warm tomorrow. Extremely warm tomorrow. Uh, and uh, CO2 kits from Italy will be released uh, sometime first week of, what do you call it, end of this month or beginning of September, uh, December. We will show for the first time the adapter of the uh, what do you call it, plasma units. Uh, we'll show you the prototype sometime this week, at the end of this week, and then we produce the mass production in early December. So you can use it as an interim. Thank you very much indeed.
we'll see you on Thursday. And for the teaching students, what they call it, knowledge seekers, we'll see you I tomorrow. love you, Mr. Cash. <laughs> yes, I son. Good morning. Are you ready to go to school? I'm no school today because I'm done school for today. Wow, fantastic. It's like me. I've been for, for a while. I'm doesn't go to school till next week. It's remember, it's week here. That's cool. Ah. It's Wednesday tomorrow, and I have to go poop tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> uh, bye, Dyson. See you tomorrow. So you'll be here with us tomorrow again when you wake up. Yeah, probably. Most probably. Okay. Thank you very much for today, and goodbye. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cash, and that's the end of the uh, Tuesday, November 10th afternoon session with the Health Teaching Workshop of the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. Okay, I'll end the live stream and we'll end the recording.